have you on TRT World. Now, as we mark 100 days of this conflict, what do you make of how Israel's army has conducted itself in terms of the goals that it set up, namely to destroy Hamas? Well, that's a very big question. Uh, the goals that it has announced have not been achieved, and those goals, in short, are to destroy Hamas, to prevent uh, rockets from being fired into uh, <clears throat> Israel, and to free their hostages. And of course, they freed no hostages. Uh, I think today Hamas fired uh, some additional rockets into Israel. In fact, I'm sure it was today. And uh, they have not destroyed Hamas. Now, I think uh, there are some goals that have not been enunciated because those would be a, a prima facie uh, violation of international law, and that is to force population transfer. The vast destruction of infrastructure, of homes, the movement of populations into northern, uh, uh, pardon me, into southern Gaza, and now the uh, bombardment of uh, Rafah and uh, Khan Yunus uh, suggests to me that one of the enunciated, unenunciated un goals is population transfer, uh, but I don't see that happening either. So they've utterly failed. They've managed to kill. Uh, 10,000 children, 25,000 total civilians destroyed uh, Gaza and uh, really have nothing to show for it except an ICJ complaint. Hi, then. Netanyahu, who has often been quoted saying Israel's army is the most moral in the world, uh, but there are many, of course, who accuse it of breaking international law on more than one occasion, even before October 7th. From your legal and military background, do you believe this has been the case and will continue to be the case going forward? Look, look, it's laughable when he says it's the most moral army. They have literally, you know, there's something in the law that says uh, an admission is the most powerful form of proof known to the law. When uh, Netanyahu appears on uh, their national TV, speaks to his army, and cites the Amaleks, and then you have Israeli soldiers literally uh, video recording themselves doing illegal activity. For example, the destruction of homes and mosques and churches is illegal. That doesn't, uh, that's not genocide, but it's a violation of international humanitarian law. It's laughable that this man is continuing to run around to say, uh, we're the most moral uh, army in the world. They're, they're, they are not a moral army. They've engaged in uh, grave violations of international law. There's a strong case of genocide. I mean, all you have to do is read that 84-page complaint by the uh, South African delegation. This is, it, it is cited to UN agencies, not Palestinians. It is strong proof of genocide, but set aside the genocide for a minute. There is vast, indisputable evidence, admitted evidence of war crimes by this army and by this uh, uh, prime minister. When you talk about the violations and the illegal actions that uh, Israel is accused of, Israel, of course, defends this by saying that they have the right to defend uh, themselves and that Hamas is the one who is trying to commit a genocide on Israel. But then when you look at the countries who support Israel, especially when it comes to weapons like the United States, where does that leave Washington in its culpability for what's happening in Gaza. You know, the U.S. has, uh, is, hypocrisy is not beyond us. Uh, we will cite to international law when it suits our national interests, uh, but we've never really followed uh, the uh, tenets of international law or international law when it comes to Israel. Uh, that's never been something that we were very, that we're very interested in. Uh, look, with, with respect to this idea that they are entitled to self-defense, it, it is a fact that Gaza is uh, under belligerent occupation. And an occupier cannot rely on resistance to his own occupation to claim self-defense. I mean, let's be logical and stop being emotional, America, about Israel. If we're going to treat it like we treat every other country in the world, it is violating international humanitarian law. We are culpable of it. I invite uh, South Africa to indict our president uh, because he is complicit in the uh, genocide by continuing to, uh, to send weapons and fund the Israeli genocide on Gaza. And so that's my position on it. Haitham Farage, it's really good to get your take 
Uh, thank you so much. Live to us there from Los Angeles. Thank you for having me.